Hey everybody, I am here to show you some tips and tricks for making a really cool seesaw activity. Most of you already know the basics, and so I'm going to skip a few things, and if you have questions, please feel free to ask me, but I'm just going to move right past those so that we can get to the nitty gritty. In order to do that, I'm actually going to reverse engineer this document that I have created here. Edit the activity. And I have my title, I've typed everything in here, but here's a trick, guys. Our students are visual, visual, visual. So if we can give them more than just words, all the better. So Seesaw has created these codes to use so that there are graphics that are included, but you don't have to stop at what they offer because we have emojis and we have extra characters that we can use. So over here I included an ear emoji and I did that very simply. There is a keyboard code that you can use on most Windows uh, keyboards that works really well and that is tapping the Windows key and the period. So if I do that it pops up these emojis and I have um, all sorts of options here. So if I want the ear, I can type in the word ear. And I've got an ear of corn, and I've got headphones, and I've got, I don't know why I have a globe, but that's exciting. But there's the ear that I want, and I can even choose what skin tone if I decide to go fancy. So that's how I got the ear in here. Now, I also have this sort of notation. I have that little circle that says one, and I have a circle here, and I have 16th note looking things here, and all of those are extra characters. So here's how I got those. I tapped on my Windows key, and then I scroll down almost all the way to the very bottom until I get to Windows Accessories, and I have my character map. Now, I've pinned mine so that I don't have to go through that. I just click on it and get it every time. But that's how you'll find yours. And in the character map, you will find everything that you have ever desired as far as characters go. It works best if you use something like Arial or MS Gothic. If you go to a fancy font that perhaps not everyone has, uh, not everyone will have it, so you copy that and it won't show up in their computer, or it will show up as something strange like a Q or an 8. Who knows? So MS Gothic is my go-to, and it has all the things there. So if I tap down a couple of times, you're going to start seeing where I got some of those symbols. So, for example, let me see if I can find it now that we're looking together. Here I have numbers that I can just copy and paste in there if I want to use those for my instructions. I have all these box drawing elements. This is where I got the 16th note. So I went right here, double tap on it, and then I wanted one that had a bridge across. Where's the bridge across with the double beam? There we go. Two, three, and then I need the one that's facing backwards. Four, and I have here 16th notes. So I'm going to select those, copy those, and I come right over here and I can paste those in there. So now you see where I got that. And I found the circle and the square there as well as these circled number numbers. So that's one of my favorite things to do so that you have a couple of extra uh, visual cues for the kids. And then, of course, you can attach an example. Now for this one, I'll show you what I did, but I'm not going to redo it because I think you'll figure it out really quickly. I added in a graphic of the song and then this random ear that I found on the internet, and I typed the title Jolly Miller, and then I tapped the record button that was over here, and I literally picked up my recorder and I played it to create the recording for the kids to listen to. So you might be wondering, how did I get that picture? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. I'm going to skip down just a little bit and show you the template. So in Finale, I had typed up the song and all I had to do at this point was to hit print screen. Now if I hit print screen now, my face is going to be in the corner of it, but you'll understand. And then I opened up Earth and View. Earth and View is my favorite really simple photo editor. So I can tap that in there, and then it's got my face in the corner there, but that's okay. And then all I have to do is select the part that I want, 
and I can adjust the edges if I need to just a little bit so that I have just what I want and then I crop it and there is a shortcut for cropping oops there we go and that one is control Y so I just usually tap control Y but there's nothing wrong with clicking on it and then if I want to get rid of these things I'm gonna pull up the editing paint dialog and what I can do is I can grab my marker I can make sure that I've got a white color and I go in here and I say I really don't need anyone to see that little lock bar that I had to mess with the measures and uh, I don't care about the measure numbers right now so I can get rid of things like that and then I can copy this so I pasted it in there if I could if I clicked paste right now it would show up with my whole screen that I did including my face and everything and I could adjust it and all of those things of course I don't want that right now but that's how I got this in here I didn't have to save anything and take up any space I just pasted it there and then I changed the background I'm sure by now you know how to do that but in case you haven't seen it before this is the background that I chose they also have the staff for us but that's kind of confusing when you've already got another staff there so I chose something different then I added a page and this is how I did the second page Chelsea's gonna show you how to do a clone and I have created a clone here Ooh unlock to move there we go I have a clone situation here so she'll show you how to do that but I'll show you how I created this I used PowerPoint and all I did in PowerPoint was to create a yellow box and then some lighter yellow boxes and some lines and some lines and some lines and I typed the title and I found a random picture on the internet and pasted it there and there it was but you say how did I make these uh, notes invisible so that you can't see any background you can only see the lines now that's another special fancy trick that I'm excited to share with you all you have to do is select it and copy it and paste it into your Irfan view so this is where I was before I'll hit paste again and it looks massive right there but don't you worry that's just to make it easier for you to see and now when I save it this is super important by the way Irfan view is a free software that you can download for your own computer and it's available in our software library as well so you are more than welcome to grab this and use this one if you like it but if you have another photo editing program that you're already familiar with by all means use that so when you're saving things in Irfan view you have the option of choosing what file type to do most of the time you're going to be saving as a JPEG because that's the most common graphic file however if you choose a GIF or a ping or a TIFF you can have transparency my favorite is PNG because honestly it keeps the colors better than the others some of them it reduces the colors that are available so I'm gonna choose PNG then I'm gonna title it whatever I want in fact I actually already saved it right here whichever one that is so right now I'm gonna call it copy and then I, when I click Save I have right here that what I am gonna save the transparent color as I'm saving it so it click Save and it asks me which of these colors do you want to be transparent well I want the white part to be transparent so I click on it and it's done and then when I added it into Seesaw I added that photo that PNG photo and it came up with the transparency so that's a really cool trick to use if you would like to have really fancy Seesaw activities